on in the room. The Bucks. Oh my goodness, they lose it again. Losers of seven of the last ten, backing their way into the uh, the playoffs uh, this afternoon. They lose to the Orlando Magic, one thirteen to eighty eight. Come on in the room. Doc is our doctor. He writes out. He writes out scriptures. Uh, he's giving us our medicine. In a room. We are live. The Cream City crossovers. The Guru Trey Cross is the third. JT Chris King. Yeah, everybody's in the building. One thirteen eighty eight. The Orlando Magic beat the Milwaukee Bucks. The Bucks set out this afternoon with an opportunity, a chance to secure the two seed. Uh, they could have gone all dropped all the way down to the four seed. They don't. They land right in the middle. Uh, like what's what's what's, what's my girl's name getting the porridge? You know, not too hot, not too cold, but right now, yeah. who was that? Was that Goldilocks? Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah, right that was Goldilocks. In the middle is where the Bucks end up. They get the three seed, and they will face the Indiana Pacers, Tyrese Halliburton, all those guys. Uh, the Bucks had some battles with them um, throughout the season, uh, and and that's what they're going to get now as we uh, as the playoffs come into view. They have the three seed. They're facing Indiana Pacers. We're going to have to talk about that. We have to talk about this game uh, as well tonight, this afternoon, 113 to 88 in the game where the Bucks don't show up. And I'll say this too, before we get to the game recap, if you watch like we just did the end of that, that Chicago, New York game, the execution level at the end of that basketball game for both teams. And again, Chicago's a 10 seed, ladies and gentlemen, Chicago's a 10 seed in the East. The execution level from both of those basketball teams late in that basketball game was superb. Great shot making, great. Area. The total opposite of what you see from the Milwaukee Bucks. The Bucks played one good quarter basketball. And I thought they were okay in the third, fell apart in the second, and again, just basically gave up in the fourth quarter. It was 113 88 loss to the Orlando Magic. Um, get at me on the Twitter at TCIIESQ. What up to the chat? The chat, let us know what you're thinking as the Bucks are backpedaling their way into the playoffs. Are you confident? Do you have, do you hold any confidence? I don't know. Let's uh, let's talk about it. But first, as always, we got to get into the game recap sponsored by who? The law office of Daily M. Johnson. When you need defense, where? Off the court. Um, criminal defense, traffic, and OWI defense, temporary restraining orders, and injunctions. Call my guy, the law office of Daily M. Johnson, 608-893-8370. 70. He's serving Central, South Central, Wisconsin. Uh, Wisconsin. Uh, www.dmjlaw.com. That is his website. Sign up for free phone or in-person consultation. Uh, that's the law office of Daily M. Johnson. Uh, and let's get to the game recap. A 113-88 loss to the uh, to the Orlando Magic. Orlando Magic. Uh, Damian Lillard. Your boy, Damian Lillard. Here's uh, I'm trying to think. I, I, I'll save my Dame take for after. We get through the recap. I'm just going to read the stats. Two of 14. Mm. My goodness. Just very fortunate the refs decided to call fouls for him today. He was 12 of 13 for the line. So a good job there. But he basically just grifted his way to 16 points. Because he was 2 of 14 from the field. 0 of 4 from 3. Like, that's that ain't going to get it done. Um, Pat Beverly, two points tonight. Uh, this afternoon, he he was okay. Brooke Lopez, 11 points. Bobby Porter, 17 and 10. He had some good moments, but he also had some bad moments. Chris Milton had 17 points, five assists, three rebounds in 31 minutes of action. Um, the bench provided nothing. Six points from Crowder, four points from Beasley. Um, Beasley has not responded well to coming off of the bench. He was 0-4 from three, so I don't know what you can expect from him. Um, the the your your back half guys got in late in the game once this thing was decided. And I think once the Bucks realized that they could fall no further than third place in the East. Um, but again, just a, a, a very bad performance on an afternoon where you would think the Milwaukee Bucks would be hyped, would be ready to come in, take over the two seat, assert some dominance. And again, if you win this game tonight, if the Bucks had won this basketball game, there's an opportunity that you would have not, well, you would have knocked Orlando into the play in, and you could have ended up playing Orlando in a, in a first round series. Instead, that doesn't happen. Now you got the three seed, you're gonna take on the Pacers. That's something we'll talk about. Look at Orlando, um, they just dominated the Bucks tonight, this afternoon. Uh, ben Carroll, 26, 11, and 7. He was good. Franz Wagner, 
25 points, three boards, three assists. He was good. To me, the best player, I mean, well, I, then maybe I'm giving away my game ball. Jonathan Isaac was, and he only puts up 10 points and eight rebounds. He had three blocks. Jonathan Isaac dominated that basketball game. I mean, my goodness. Um, D- Donald Trump would be proud uh, of the performance that Jonathan Isaac put on. Uh, I know. I, Mega I, John. I, the only yep. thing Jonathan Isaac didn't have to do during the game was have on the, the Trump shoes. Uh, but other than that, that was a fantastic performance from Jonathan Isaac. Credit where credit is due. Jalen Suggs was up four points and uh, and four assists. Gary Harris did a – I mean, again, Gary Harris did a great job as well uh, defending Damian Lillard. I don't – again, I, at this point, I don't know if it's as much the defense as it is versus Damian Lillard just thinking it up. But I'm going to give Gary Harris some credit because he, he had the responsibility and he did a great job. Cole Anthony with 13 points. Joe Ingles, three points. Um, uh, Wendell Carter Jr. had a good moment, a uh, good stretch in the basketball game when he got in as well. And then uh, the brother of Franz Wagner, uh, Mo Wagner, a 10 points, one board for him, one assist. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know what else there is to say about this one other than the second quarter decided his basketball game for the Milwaukee Bucks. Like, one question I asked when the game started, and the Bucks. I thought the first quarter from the wall, it was a it was a professional quarter of basketball. That's the term I would use. It was a very professional quarter of basketball for the Milwaukee Bucks. They came out, Orlando looked like a very middling to average looking basketball team, and the Milwaukee Bucks just did everything they needed to do, execute it, get nothing crazy, but it was just, hey, we're a little bit we 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 play a professional brand of basketball. I don't know what the hell y'all young boys got going on. And in the second quarter, all of that flipped. The Bucks put up 12 points. Um, again, Damian Lillard was, you know, of course he had to sit for some of the second quarter because he played the entire first, uh, but everything fell apart for the Milwaukee Bucks in the second quarter. They got outscored 25 to 12. Uh, it was embarrassing. Um, and, and that was basically all she wrote. I mean, I mean, I, I, I didn't understand the philosophies, um, what the Bucks had going. I mean, how many times did we see Damian Lillard try to get a switch off of and get onto Jonathan Isaac? It was like, that's, it was almost like that was the matchup they were trying to attack and it just did not work. Jonathan Isaac, had, could stay with Damian Lillard, could protect the rim. He did everything. Again, it just goes to – I won't say Brooke Lopez could ever really play on the perimeter defensively like that, but that's what we talk about when it's like we want to get younger and better and more athletic on the perimeter with your bigs. And, you know, that's what Jonathan Isaac looked like. And he cut, he down a few threes, knocked down a few threes as well um, in the process. That's what you want to look at. And instead, the Bucks have Brooke Lopez who looks old, slow, aloof, all of the above. So all of that contributes – to a 113-88 loss to Orlando Magic. Disappointing. Um, you can use a lot of different words for what the Bucks look like today. You know, I, I don't know. I would say it definitely does not instill any confidence in the Milwaukee Bucks when you're talking about heading into the playoffs. But um, a lot of, I don't know. I, I'll say this. Only I'll say before I go to you, JT, we've had this debate, and I know a lot of people in the chat, we had this debate, and, and you know, should Giannis play? Can you rush him back? If Giannis is not ready by game one, I, 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 I have my doubts as to whether this team gets past the first round. Giannis has to be ready to go game. When, when the opening tip, Giannis got to be out there. That's all. I, that's what I know. Jump ball, Giannis got to be ready to play. That's all I'm going to say. If he's not, I, I could easily see the Milwaukee Bucks um, bowing out to the Indiana Pacers. Um, and but yeah, We'll talk about Indiana in a second. But, JT, that's what I saw. What would you see? I absolutely hate the fact that I think you're right on that because I would argue that with this roster and us thinking that we have a you know top three roster in the in the NBA, top five roster in the NBA, I, I would like to think that we have the ability with the players we have to to at least let Giannis sit for one game in a series against a team like the Pacers. Having said that, though, with the way this team plays, I mean, it, it could be disastrous. Um, but you know, today's game, I agree with you. That first quarter, I thought they were professional. That second quarter was absolutely abysmal. You realize the Bucks didn't make they so in, in the final three minutes of in the final seven minutes of regulation in that second quarter, the Bucks scored three points and they were three Chris Middleton free throws. You're telling me in a game now to, to take it back a step, this is in the last what five years, the last time a regular season finale has meant a damn thing for this Bucks team. I think that's right, probably with the last five years as well. So you're telling me in a game with the stakes like this, we have questions about want to. We have questions about fortitude. We have questions about mental acumen. We have questions about everything that we shouldn't have to question at this point. Who does that fall on? 
obviously you put some of it on Doc, but it's the players. I thought we were going to see a lot, and I know I know we don't really want to drill down, you know, too much on 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 Dame Lillard's performance, but I was expecting Dame Lillard to come out swinging today and show every. Hey, listen, you didn't have Giannis on the court. You had everything. The win was at your back for you to come out and ball out. You had a guy that you had just cooked a few nights ago guarding you. You had the confidence there and everything. And tonight, you come out and go two for fourteen. I mean. I, where's the explanation? I don't even have an explanation for there, right? It's just an absolute malfeasance, right? It just it made zero sense. However, I'll say something positive because I don't want to get everybody blood pressure up. Bobby Portis, again, seemed to be a bright light. You saw him in that first half. Bobby Portis was about business and Bobby Portis to an extent, you know, minus the last seven minutes. Bobby Portis wanted to put this team on his back. Five for eight, 14 points is beautiful. Where it falls apart is the second half. Bobby Portis would only take one more shot. He would only take one more shot the entire game. I mean, I I just don't know. I don't know where the fight was in this team. There was a lot that I was expecting. Uh, you know, you could say Brooke Lopez from the numbers perspective. So what, Bobby finished with seven, 17 and 10. Uh, you know, Middleton as well finished with 17 and three. Brooke Lopez finished with 11 and three, even though, I mean, very low impact points. Is that a thing? Low impact points? Because I, I, I'm, I'm th- th- that is definitely going to be a thing. I'm gonna start using that now. These are low impact points, right? Where you just don't move the needle. You may score something, but you know the material impact is nil. Oh, Dame, I, I don't want to hit. I, I don't want to hit on that horse right now because I'm sure we'll get into it too. You got virtually zero help from the point from the bench. Pat Connaughton did cardio. He's been doing cardio all year. Um, and yeah, that fourth quarter you mailed it in. And by the way, I'll end it with this. The Nassis just had to give us a Shaq in the full moment. Did you see that? The last minute, the Nassis misses the dunk on the fast break. And, and he's running out of court, pointing to someone, saluting it, like point, you know, pointing, giving somebody credit. I don't even think he knew he missed that. It just – I don't know what happened here. But, man, this was an absolute disaster. And I, I'm, in, I'm embarrassed. I am worried about this team. It is time to sound the alarm bells. I, I – I mean, we could play ourselves in the first round, and I'm not—I'm not, I, I'm not even—there's no guarantee that we would win. I mean, it's just unbelievable. This is unbelievable. Yeah, for me, I think the story of the game was the turnovers, the not valuing possessions, and then it ultimately led to a ton of transition buckets for the Orlando Magic. Chris Middleton, stop putting the ball on the floor, man. <laughs> like, like at, at some point, you've got to figure out and pick your pick your matchups correctly instead of dribbling the ball into double teams, uh, dribbling through traffic throwing wild passes while you're in the air like that led to a lot of points Damian Lillard had some instances where he's just sloppy turning the ball over and then Doc Rivers I mean the action on offense was just terrible I saw a Pat Bev Damian Lillard pick and roll like what are we what are we doing Pat Bev catches the ball at the free throw line and turns it over himself and they go down and hit a three like it, it was the dumb mistakes that led to the loss tonight and I was very unimpressed with the way that they showed up in a game that you felt like now, obviously, the Cavs, they kind of mailed it in and, and lost to the Hornets. But you felt like, all right, if you win, you, you get the two seed and you avoid a second round matchup with Boston. Right. But we ended up getting lucky regardless. But I, but I was still disappointed. And I, quite frankly, I think we got lucky that the Cavs mailed it in because it could have been that four or five matchup. Um, yeah, and I don't know how Giannis wouldn't come back for the first game. Uh, we had a ton of people in our chat saying that, oh, well, this is a different team. We've got Dame now to run the point. Well, look, Dame, Dame today was terrible. He was god-awful. So you can't trust him to carry this team to a at least a, a game one win or a game two win. You just can't because he also lost to the Raptors when he was the lead guy. Uh, he, also, he lost to the Magic today. He's also had some good moments, but that's just too inconsistent. You have to rely on the guy who can actually bring you consistent performances, and that's Giannis. So he needs to be back, man. And yeah, today was just god awful basketball. Was very unimpressed with with the Bucks and felt like the Magic weren't even that good of a team today. It was just the Bucks were worse, and that's the problem so far with this Milwaukee Bucks squad uh, this season. Um, so let me let me just address though, and I, I agree with a, a lot of what I heard from both of you guys. I'm just going to address the chat right now because, and this is what this is where like optimism and hope comes in that. Jay Wan says, no effort was played today. We tanked. Game means nothing. This was a great loss. Green Ranger says, truth is no one wanted Philly or Miami. This is a, Nari, the Bulls fan, says, this is a great loss for the Bucs. No, no Miami or Philly in the first round. Great loss. And 
I'm not even going to say that I don't, I'm not going to say I just, I don't, I disagree with you. Like I, I think it, it ends up working out for the Bucks, but don't fool yourselves. Do not come here and fool yourselves and thinking that the Milwaukee Bucks came out here and tr- and tanked and tried to lose. Stop it. Stop it. They did not. Because if they did, they wouldn't have they wouldn't have brought Damian Lillard off the bus. They wouldn't have brought Chris Milton off the bus. If you want to take you to done what Cleveland did and play G Leaguers for the second half, that Cleveland, Cleveland did that on purpose. Cleveland said, Hey, we want no mas. We don't want any parts of it. And again, you know what? I'll give a shout out to the New York Knicks because they didn't do that. They didn't go out like some punks like the Cleveland Cavaliers. They could have eased just as easy to say, you know what? Because that's what because that that that's where I'm going at too when people go, oh, it was a great loss. And da, da, da. No, because the New York Knicks could have decided, you know what? We'll lose two. And you still got the two seed. However, you want to do it. So stop. Don't give me this BS. It was always a oh, it was great because the and the Bucks tried to. No, they didn't. They did not try to lose. They got their butts whooped. That's what happened. Damian Lillard doesn't go. You don't go out there and put out two of 14 game film. That's not a thing. That's not a, hey, I'm I'm a, I'm a miss shots on purpose and go two of 14 so we lose. That is not a thing. No, he sucked. He stunk it up. He sucked. Don't give me this beat. Oh, y'all, y'all, don't kill me with this. Oh, they, oh they, so they tried to lose. No, they did not. Chris Milton got ripped in the open court like I've seen him get ripped every other game. There wasn't, wasn't, it wasn't like, oh, man. Well, I know in the, in the playoffs come, he going he to handle the ball better. No, he's not. I promise you, we'll come back in here uh, Wednesday night when the Bucs play. No, no, Wednesday's when, the, when they play in. When the playoffs start, we'll come back in here after the Bucs play the Pacers, and we'll be talking about the play that Chris Milton got ripped in the middle of the court and he should have passed the ball. We'll be talking about the same plays. We'll be talking about the plays where Damian Little was open for three and he missed the shot. We'll be talking about the plays where Beasley didn't stop, man. Y'all got to stop these lies about the Bucks and thinking that everything, oh, man, it was great. No, it wasn't. And, again, I'm not saying that Damian Lillard can't turn it on. I'm just saying I haven't seen it. That's all I'm saying. I, I, I Do I think it's in there somewhere? It, it has been, but I have not seen it. And so to pretend in your mind and play mental gymnastics like the Bucks were out there and did that on purpose, that, man, cut it out. Cut it. That's all I'm saying. Cut it out, man. That that was that was an embarrassing performance. You lucked up because you still you got the three seed and you're gonna play the Pacers. Okay, and somebody else just mentioned in the chat. I think it was Jay Watson. Brooke Lopez. Now now you're in a position. Well, what the hell is Brooke Lopez gonna do in the series against the Pacers? What is he gonna do? Well, he can't, he can't be out there. In the floor. What is he gonna? So now you're basically down one starter. You are down a starter in a series against the Pacers because I got one guy that can't even play in the series for real. This is going to be a knockdown drag out series. It's going to be six, seven, six, seven games, probably. Um, and again, uh, pray, pray. <laughs> it's the Bucks. It's, it's, it, man, I, eesh. the Bucks, again, I, I don't want to get to Indiana just yet, but, I, but I'm just saying, like, what they showed me today, again, the basketball, like, that's what I'm saying, the basketball, I always talk about the basketball gods and, like, they're watching and whatnot. And I think the basketball guys watched Cleveland, and that was, you know, they did what they wanted to do on purpose. The Bucks did not. They just got beat. And then you saw New York, which New, the New York Knicks could have decided, hey, we don't want any parts of, of Philadelphia, Miami. We're going to bow out of this gracefully just like y'all do, just like y'all did. And we'll take the three seed and we'll play Indiana. But, uh, but again, they, they showed a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of moxie, if you will, um, by sticking and they and they went to overtime against Chicago. OT could have pulled the dog, said we good. No, that's what winning teams do. Like winning teams execute down the stretch. Jalen Brunson, there's no doubt. Jalen Brunson, look, I mean, I, there is no chance in the world if, if you had all your money, you put it on Jalen Brunson one on one or Damian Lillard. J- Jalen Brunson running the, running the team in the game possession with everything on the line or Damian Lillard. I'm you, I'm putting, I'm betting all my money on, on Jalen Brunson every day and twice on Sunday. That's how much better he looks than Damian Lillard. It sucks to say it in a game like today, playoff-like implications, the guy you traded for, Damian Lillard, looked as bad as he did. I mean, that was, that was pathetic, man. I mean, that was absolutely pathetic. That was absolutely pathetic. And it, I, I, I agree. I, I mean, two for 14, I, I mean, even six for 14, five for 14 is awful. Two for 14 is pitiful. It's, it's pitiful. I mean, I, I wish 
we could take it out as game check. I do. Unfortunately, you can't do that with the CBA, how that works. But, yeah, that makes no sense. And and I don't understand. Here's what I don't get. We lost – we've lost, what, seven out of our last ten games? Six out of our last seven games? And so you would think you would at least want to end the season with the dub. And I and I and or you would at least think that this team would have looked like they would have died trying to do that. I think Doc got comfortable with the loss in the fourth. But let's not act like you know when Doc got that comfortable with the loss once once it was announced that I think uh, the game was over. You know, no, the yeah, game, once the it was, game over. was over. That that was why he got comfortable with the loss. The game was over. They weren't they weren't coming back. It was over. He yeah. got comfortable with the loss after they lost. Well, but it was early, it was early in the fourth, and you could. I mean, I get you. It was it was they had zero momentum. I understand that, but I guess what I'm saying is that that's when the reports came out that the the Bucks would have been locked in that three seed with a loss. When it was like they can't finish any any worse than the third seed. So I'm gonna assume that he was comfortable at that point, but. Even even so, even still, I mean, is this the performance that you really want to go into the playoffs with? Not not even so much of the loss, just how terrible everybody looked. I, I'm not really sure. I don't know. I, I Part of me, I'm running out of optimism here because everybody who's like, oh, Dan's going to figure this out in the playoffs. What are you looking at to rely on that state? Where is that assertion coming from? It, it has to be coming from YouTube highlights from with the Blazers. It's not from this year. There's absolutely no way. Where Where is that coming from? Like what? What makes anybody think that Dame is going to come to the playoffs and he's going to figure out and be consistent and put together a string of games that he has not been able to do in the 82 or 70s or whatever number he played in the regular season? I don't know, man. But I, I think at, at this point, I think this team has all the potential in the world to win the finals and they equally have the potential in the world to be out in that first round. Yeah, I just think to, tonight just solidified that you do not want to go into that first round matchup first game without Giannis Adetokounmpo. It's just it, you you can't do it. There's nothing like you said, JT, to rely on from Dame this season to be like, okay, he's gonna be a playoff riser and he's gonna just go out and win you the first two games without Giannis or the first game without Giannis. No, you can't trust that. In no way can you trust that. And then I would also say the matchup with the Pacers, and I know we'll get to that. That that's even worse. You, you're going to need somebody who can guard bigs because they have Pascal now, and we haven't seen that yet against the Bucks. Uh, mm, but they yeah. but they have Pascal now. They have Obi Toppin playing at a high level. Miles Turner has been playing at a pretty high level all season. And so you know when you talk about not having Brook there, now you've got a point guard who can easily outplay Damian Lillard on any given night. And then if you don't have Giannis, you're, you're damn near cooked for the first couple of games. So you, ne- you need him out there. It solidified it tonight with Dame just getting all his points at the free throw line instead of uh, making some shots. So, yeah, that's all I got on Dame, man. Uh, the 11 King says, lame, lame Lillard can't even beat anyone one-on-one and is indecisive in his passing. Um, Jay Wan's arguing with this here. But, again, I, listen – Today's just not the day, dog. I mean, I, I'm just – and, again, I, I don't – you came on here to bash day. I didn't come on here to bash day. When you shoot 2 of 14, is that bashing? I'm, I'm trying – is that – I mean, how is that bashing somebody if you if you legitimately shot 2 of 14 tonight? That's, that's well, he doesn't have – what do you mean you don't have a green light? You took the second most shots on the team. And the only reason you took the second most shots on the team is because you started off one of 11 – and got passive and only took three shots in the second half in a team in a game where you got and they think about this in a game where the Milwaukee Bucks were they were actively trying to win so don't, I'm not gonna take the BS that they weren't they're actively trying to win you start off one for eleven in the first half you came out in the third quarter and took three shots it, 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 with with no Giannis on the floor you came out and took three shots like hey uh, don't blame me don't blame I, I don't want no parts of this that's what that look it looks it's a it, it's giving. I don't want any of this. Don't put not don't put none of this on me. Two of fourteen again, one of eleven in the first half, and you go and you take three shots in the second half. And I get it, he didn't play the fourth quarter. I get it, but in the third quarter, your team is down. You're trying to get some momentum. Y'all are losing, and you and you say, "Hey, somebody else take this." Chris Middleton came out with more of an effort, and more of a focus, and more of an ability, and got the Bucks within four to start that to get. Once uh, Orlando got in the first, I think Orlando took a, an initial run in the third quarter, and then Chris calmed it down and got to four points. And at that point, I'm thinking, okay, Dame's gonna step up here and try to get us. And I think he had an open three and missed it. And I think that I think he he missed an open three in the first few minutes of the third. And was like, yeah, I ain't got it. I don't got it today, folks. Y'all, somebody else do this. I don't. I don't want any of it. And again, it's 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 disheartening. And again, I mean, again, you're playing Orlando Magic. 
Dame was, again, the top 75 guy. Dame was not as good as Milton today. Wasn't as good as Portis. So he, I. I Cooking the other night against against uh, uh, against, against and Bancaro and, and Bancaro came and shut that down and was he was cooking the other night so I guess it was it's reasonable for us to expect him to do what he had been doing before I, I mean I'm not I don't think we really want to bash them I will say though that I do think that the majority of Bucks fans are definitely just disappointed. If you, if you think of one word to describe Dame to this team this season, it's been disappointing. I don't think he's lived up to reasonable, reasonable expectations because we looked at him and saw what he did and figured, worst case scenario, he'll just keep doing what he what he did. And the numbers support him playing not as well this year for the Bucks as he has in the past for the Trailblazers. Like, the numbers are out there. This isn't, we're not making this up. So so he was the third best player tonight for the Bucks behind Middleton and Portis. And if you look at Orlando – he wasn't as good as Isaac. He wasn't as good as Ben Carroll. He wasn't as good as uh, Wagner. He wasn't as good as Cole Anthony. I'll I'll just leave it there. I could probably say he wasn't as good as uh, Mo Wagner either. But that's four and three. So he, Damian Lillard, top 75 NBA player, was the eighth best player on the floor tonight in a game against the Orlando Magic. How the hell are you going to win a playoff series like that? That's all I'm asking. Jay Wan's upset. Jay Wan, y'all, you know – um then bench dame this show this show is about bashing our players no it's not it's about holding people accountable that's what it's about mm. and again and again and again the, then that and this that's a very dame like attitude jay Wan. then bench dame put him on the bench then if you don't like him no no you know sometimes your dog poop in the house you put their nose in it no bad dame bad dame you put his <laughs> nose in it no i'm not benching you I'm not, I'm not putting you on the bench. You don't get to sit and watch everybody else when you were brought here. You make it. Then bench him. Give somebody else your money. Not nobody benching you. No. You play. Play better. You know what? Bench you. Nobody's going to bench. Nobody's going to. That's like the quarterbacks. Quarterback throw four interceptions and it's fourth quarter. Put somebody. Hell no. You stay your ass in there and finish the game. I ain't putting nobody else in. I ain't putting the backup in just because you threw four interceptions and lost the game. No. Stay in there. Finish it out. Finish it out. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't benching the offensive lineman. And they were blocking for your ass all day, watch you throw four interceptions. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody, ain't nobody make you shoot 14 times and miss all of them. Ain't nobody taking you out for that. No, stay your ass in the game. You should, Doc should have left him in the fourth quarter and let him play the rest of that game out, losing like that. Let, I should have let his should have left his ass out there with Andre Jackson Jr. That's what I'd have done. That's what I'd have left his ass out there with Ajax and said, You you gonna finish this one, buddy. And the terrible man, I'm I'm I, I'm sick, man. I'm sick. Like I thought he was better. I thought he was better than this. That's my that that's my thing. I thought he was better than this. My bad. Go ahead. There's no, they were not going in this game to lose it. So, given the stakes, given the fact that you could have locked up the two seed, I don't care if you were ducking whoever it is, Philly or Miami. There's no way you can show up or not show up like that in, in a game where you are trying to win. We know they were trying to win. They were not trying to mail it in. And so, yeah, I mean, it's terrible. It's t- I mean, what would, how, what justice would we be doing by sitting here? Oh, Dame had an off night. Th- there's been plenty of nights like that during the season where we maybe giving him a pass because we got a dub. But other than that, we've done this all season. We've recognized that he's not playing to the caliber of the guy that we traded for that we thought we were getting. So we're not gonna just give him a pass. I don't get it. How many passes do you need? <laughs> You got a damn pass to go to a birthday party. You got a pass for that. How many more passes you need? Jesus. I mean, what are we talking? A pass? It's it's go time now. We gave you the passes. It's go time. Um, I, I think the ahead, thing is that, is this, that a lot of people find disappointing is the fact that they know he's so much better than this, right? And 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 I'm just going to look at the numbers. I'm not going to I'm not going to pass judgment on the numbers. I think we've been a dead horse here. But here's what I'll say. Yeah. Last five games from Dame. 10 for 24 against Toronto, 4 for 11 against New York, 5 for 11 against Boston, 10 for 19 against Orlando, 2 for 14 against Orlando today from a shooting percentage as well, right? So if you think that's all NBA, top 75 caliber player, especially when, when people keep saying, well, he needs time, he needs time, you know, give him time. He's going to get better as it goes, right? He's going to get better as the season goes. I mean, I think I think you might be able to dispute that solely looking at the numbers. Now, the film may tell may tell a slightly different story and may tell a more favorable story. There's no there's no question about that. But having said that, from a pure numbers perspective and from an actual overall overall impact, his shooting is problematic at this point. And there, and, and the question you got to ask yourself is, are you going to get the ten for nineteen in the playoffs? Are you going to get that four for eleven? You going to get that two for fourteen? 
And I think at this point, we would all feel a little bit better if we felt more confident that we were going to get the 10 for 19. But unfortunately, we've seen a little bit too frequently the 4 for 11. The 5 for like, like, that's just that, 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 that It seems to be a bit more common than, uh, th- than we would all like when you have a player of Dame's caliber on the squad. And again, I, I hate to say this, we got rid of Drew Holiday. We traded for Dame because it made sense. And we would do that trade nine out of ten times, right? But on the same note, we would do that trade because we're thinking we're going to get better results, better performance, strong. If you wanted a tour date, I mean, Drew's going to give you a tour date in the playoffs. You knew that. You knew that was coming, right? I think at this point for Dame to do so, and if he does that consistently, I think a lot of people will be very disappointed over that. Oh, oh there's no oh, there's no question. And, again, I, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to keep, keep going with it. But, no, um, you talk about that, JT, in the playoffs. If that happens in the playoffs – the people that have that have held reservations throughout and have tried to be nice about this, I just don't pull punches. But the people who have tried to be nice about this, oh, they 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 will everybody will turn because there's no and again, national media, there's no way you can look away from it. It's it's been that bad. Uh Jay Wan says Trey smiles more when he bashes Dane than he does when he plays well. Your support shows in your expression. Jay Wan, the only I, I smile to stop myself from crying. That's the only that's all that's the only way I can do this. Uh, is to not to and not cry when 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 a guy I thought was gonna lead us to a championship is shooting two of fourteen that that truly truly makes my heart uh, hurt. Uh, but uh, but again, it, it, <laughs> this is what we this is what we got. Uh, so I gotta laugh through the laugh. What, what Kevin Hart say? Laugh for my pain because um, that's how we're feeling right now. Um, a one thirteen eighty eight loss to the Orlando Magic again. A game where. You know, your guys don't – just not, not enough. I thought I saw effort. There was a play there, I believe it was in the first half, might have been first quarter, where I believe it was Wagner was getting a rebound, and Bobby just stuck his hand through there, got it, knocked it away. Chris gets the ball, passes back to – no, it was actually Isaac. Isaac was getting a rebound. Bobby sticks his – pokes his hand in there, ball is up in the air. Chris gets the board uh, and, and passes it back to him, layup. Like, those effort, those energy plays – you got to have them, and then they went away throughout the rest of the game. So the Bucks just didn't have enough um, throughout. But again, it was just exacerbated by the game that uh, that, that Damian Lillard p- played tonight or this afternoon, rather. Um, so 113, 88 loss to the Magic on the road. Still, the Bucks having issues. They finished with the three seed. They're going to play the Pacers. Let's move on to Indiana. Indiana, uh, the Indiana Pacers. Again, they beat the Bucks. Four one regular season, right? Um, Gian, status of Giannis up in the air. I'm going to talk about this as if he's going to play game one. I don't know if he will. Obviously, I don't know how injured. Even if he does play game one, I don't know if he's going to be eighty percent, seventy percent, ninety percent. I don't know, but I do think we all can. You know, we'll admit prop. He's not going to be a hundred percent if he steps in game one. It's just not going to happen. I don't want to start with what do you think happens in the series. I feel like that's maybe a question for the end um, or, or this end of this discussion. But I, I'll ask you guys this. What do the Milwaukee Bucks – well, just play this series out, and what do the Bucks have to do to win this series? What what do you need to see? And I think it's, you know, obviously it's, well, Giannis, Dane, go crazy. I mean, I'm almost at the mindset – again, can't – can you even ex- – and that's the question. So we're talking about Jay Wan and, and, and these guys here, what, what, what's going to happen to the Pacers. Can you even expect for – and what's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over, over and over again and expecting a different result. I've been expecting all year to see this Damian Lillard show up and be this efficient guy. He really gave me, what, two weeks after All-Star break? Of, remember, that, remember like two, two and a half weeks after All-Star break? We're like, okay, Dame turned the corner. Am I expecting too much to say he's going to come in against Indiana and it's going to be a little bit different? Or is Giannis going to have to go to takeover mode? Is it going to have to be a collective effort? How do the Bucs defend this Indiana team who just put up like 150-something this this afternoon too? Like, I get and I, and I understand why this is a better matchup. I, I still don't know if it will be a better matchup than Miami because at least I know that I don't think Miami could just – the worry of Miami – is that Jimmy Butler is just so dominant that he just beats you. I don't even know that he's going to be that in this postseason. Indiana, however, can beat you in a variety of different ways 
with a variety of different guys and a point guard who does a little bit of everything, right? How do you defend this team? Can Brooke Lopez be on the floor? Is there a matchup that you could put in where Brooke, can you do something that makes Brooke Lopez more effective? Offensively, can you keep up? So, and so I guess that's my, my first question here. Are the Bucs going to have to keep up with Indiana offensively, or are they going to be able to bring Indiana down defensively to, you know, somewhere in the 110s to get this series winnable? Is this going to be a half-court, slow, hey, we're going to slow this down and try to dictate pace, or are the Bucs going to have to try to literally outscore Indiana? We've seen them be able to do that early, but we haven't seen those high scoring volume of games since early in the season. It just hasn't come from the Bucs. I, I, I'm – I, I, yeah, I, I leave it to you guys. Let me know, like, what what are your thoughts on, like I said, this matchup and and how some of it plays out and what the Bucks need to do. My guess is you're probably going to have to put up at least 120 against this Indiana team. The good news is they're a bottom five defense. True. Right? Well, I mean, their defense. I'm sorry, they might be a smidge outside. Last time I checked, they were like 24th. In, 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 they're like a 24th ranked defense, so it shouldn't be hard for us to come by buckets. And remember, we we we. We were balling with Indiana earlier this year. Now, that was under Adrian Griffin when our offense was at a historic pace, too. So I think that's that's important. But um, I I still think if you want to slow down Indiana, Pat Beverly, look, we need you to we need you to lock down Halliburton. Let's slow him down. Let's go. That's a big ass. Well, Halliburton was, was 6'7"? I thought he was like 6'6". Six, 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 is he that six. big? Yeah. Hey, yo. Is he? <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm yeah, gonna check. I'm gonna check on how how big. You know, like, like right. I mean, uh, Pat Beverly Crowder. We need we need we need to get some of our guys on the perimeter on Halliburton. We need to six five, six, six five, and, six, we, five. and we need. Okay, so if he's listening, six five. How tall? Six three. Oh no, he's not six three. Come on, six four. Like, let's I, not let's he, not see let's not yeah, front like he, you know be padding stats on NBA well, roster. Yeah, but he 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 is a very large, tall point guard. Oh, he's okay, he's tall. Hey, hey yo, he 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 looks hey. six five. He he yeah. he looks six five. I, I can see him trying to trying to say, hey, don't make me look as tall as I am because I'm you know I don't want. I, he he looks. It's almost like Giannis. Giannis always this is six eleven. I think we all know he's a seven footer. But they don't. They never list Giannis seven feet. I don't know why. But go ahead. Now, I, now I don't think there's a single player on that team defensively that can hold Giannis. I, I, I don't think so. I think Giannis no. gonna go absolutely crazy. And remember, Giannis put up that fifty piece against him. Didn't he put up a triple? Did he put up triple he double up against like, Indiana? Didn't he put up like sixty? Didn't he? Yeah, he, he put was up sixty four. Like, yeah, he put up his, his career high. Yeah, that's and what I thought. The game was, ball. <laughs> but then right. the first time he put up like fifty. Yeah, he did. Right. Without, 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 without Dame in a loss. Yes. Without Dame, right. So Giannis is going to go. Giannis needs to go. Giannis got to do what he what he does. Our team defensively, we we've, we've got to get some stops. We got to slow them down because this Indiana team, while they're a bottom four defense, I believe they're a top three offense. I think that's right. Something something around there as well. And yeah, but but more important to me, the way I see it with Indiana. It's not about slowing them down as much as it's about us not beating ourselves. The Bucks playing up to their potential. The shooters hitting shots, guys getting open, creating the space, and doing everything that this team is supposed to do. Figuring out the pick and roll, the pick and pop. I mean, and I don't know if that's too much for for Doc Rivers to try to do and, and throw that all into this series. But this team has all the potential in the world to beat this this uh, this Pacers team. There's no question about that. I don't think we're overmatched at all. In fact, I think we have the advantage over the Pacers from a practical perspective, or, or from a from a um, a high level, we would have the advantage. Now, when you drill down and say, well, listen, this Bucks team is kind of reeling, right? Lost one three out of the last 10 games. They've lost to some of the worst teams in the NBA. They've lost in some of the worst fashions. They have zero momentum at this point. Giannis is injured. We don't know if he's going to be fully healthy. We're not even sure half the guys want to be out there. We got some mental lapses a little bit too frequently this late in the season. Then you say, eh, all right, yeah, this, this, this might be a bit more of a battle than we'd expect. So for me, I think you have to do a combination of both, Trey, when you talk about playing fast and then slowing them down. I think you have to uh, slow them down, but be able to get out in transition as much as you can because I think they'll be very vulnerable in transition. Um, and you don't want to let them score at the clip that they do. So I think that's where playing slow comes in, into play. But having Giannis would just be incredible for the first game. I mean, that would be – it would be great to just – Give our give them our best shot in game one, game two at home. Um, I think that's where you also have another advantage. We play well at home, and you can really grip the series um, in those first <laughs> stop, in those first two games. And yeah, I'm 
I'm, I'm not as concerned as I think a lot of people are about the Pacers. I actually want this matchup because of the beef during the season. I want I want us to big brother them because, they're look, we have the better personnel. We can beat them. It's just will we give that effort? And I think where that comes in, you don't need any external motivation because they've already done so much talking, getting on podcasts or uh, talking trash during the games, getting ejected, stuff like that. Um, and they've really tried to, I mean, even though that they, they beat you uh, four games, I, I, they, they're really trying to, to get under your skin. And I think you're just the more mature team. And so I think that's where you also have an advantage. So I think, like you said, Trey, both slow them down and speed it up when you need to. I think that would be uh, the best formula for taking care of the Pacers. Yeah, speaking of, you know, speaking of talking, um, remember Malik Beasley in January talked about the Pacers and said, I know we're going to play them in the playoffs. And boy, it's not going to be pretty for them. Uh, you remember when he sat down and said that with uh, Chris Haynes, I believe it was. He did say that, yeah. Um, so again, that's when he was at his peak too. So um, again, this is gonna be, it's gonna be a fun series. And again, what it, I, I'm sure there's gonna be more in a couple. Uh, I don't wanna say brawls, but I'm sure gonna be some dust ups that, that take place with Bobby and and you know those guys. I, I don't know, man. I, I think that I think you guys are are are, are right. I think the Bucs are going to have to be much more physical than um, than Indiana. I think Brooke Lopez is going to have to be as physical as we've ever seen him within, I don't know if he played 15, 20 minutes, whatever it is. Um, I think that Damian Lillard is going to have to be, at the least, he's going to have to be the third best player on the floor to win this series. He's got to be the third best player on the floor. Yeah, has got to be the best, and then maybe you can get by with Therese Hall- Tyrese Halliburton in there, but Dame's got to be the third best player on the floor um, coming in. And again, he, he's, I, I mean, I'm just looking there at, at their roster and what they do. And then I look at the second unit coming in, like, do the Bucks even have an answer for their second unit when TJ McConnell comes in the game? Cause I've seen TJ McConnell kill the Bucks. Right. Um, I, again, I, I think this is a series where Doc Rivers isn't going to be able to play around. I don't think you can, I, I think they've, they've got to play 43, 44, like Dame's got to literally, he, you have to run the wheels off of these guys to get out of the first round. And it's going to be tough. I think it's going to be a, a hard fought first round. I think it can happen, um, obviously. But these guys are, are going to, you know, and that's what kind of hoping upon hope here. These guys are going to have to play a brand of basketball that they have not played in a in a long time. And I will say, too, Indiana's not going to be afraid of them. Like, you're not going to have, I think a lot of times, teams, especially veteran-led teams, championship-level teams like the Bucks they would hold this advantage over a team like Indiana, scrappy, young, hungry, just getting – because it's like, yeah, we the top dogs. Nobody will be afraid to come into your building and play you. You are going to have to beat the hell out of them to make them afraid to play. You are going to have to be more physical and out-hustle and out-work them. And that's what – that, I guess, is probably my biggest scare in the series is that Indiana is going to come out as the more hungry team. And maybe even more so than individual performances and Doc Rivers adjustments and game plans is like, who's going to win the effort game? Who is going to be the team that look that because Doc Rivers can't teach you diving on the floor for loose balls. I know Pat Conte is going to, I mean, I know Pat Beverly's going to do that kind of stuff. Is Chris Milton going to do that? Is Brooke Lopez going to do that? Because again, if you look at the Indian Pacers roster, all those guys are going after balls. <laughs> Whoa, you know, and, uh, Andre Jackson Jr. would be another guy too, right? So, he's so, so, not so play. Hold, but he, hold on, Did well, you, and Bobby will die at the balls. Do, mm. do you think that Andre Jackson Jr. is going to play in the series? Well, and so, and and well, and what I was eventually going to say is now that depends on how Doc's personnel usage, right? That depends on if Doc says, "Look, we need a spark, Rook. I'm gonna trust you. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give you some minutes right now." We need a spark. We need something. We need. I need you to go out there and make plays. Now, we may not. He very well may not see the series at all. But having said that, when you talk about a team that needs some grit, needs some attitude, needs some toughness to get out there, I don't see how Andre Jackson Jr. is not viewed as one of those players on a team that bring that to the table. Well, it's not that he doesn't bring. It's just that Dyer, he's, he's just not – nothing shows me he's going to play. And if he does, it's almost going to be like a break, in, was it, break glass in case of panic. You're going to be down 0-2 or something, and, you know, now we're in the – or you're in the third quarter down 12, and let's see if we can get a rally going. Here comes Andre Jackson Jr. That's not really using him. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not the same as he's in the game plan and playing. 
I think that the Bucks are going to have to, again, you know, when you talk about stopping this basketball team, Mouse Turner is a huge, like, point. To how, how do you – what do you do with Brooke? Do you try to play Giannis at the five and just do small ball? Uh, Jay Crowder I, – I thought, you know, there were some moments this afternoon when Jay Crowder was the four. Um, and I believe Jay was at the four and Bobby was the five, if I'm – if I'm not mistaken, I think that's how the Bucks were running it a little bit this afternoon. This is when they were still in the game. Um, I think you're gonna have to do some of that. I really do. I really do think the Bucks gonna have to run some li- some lives we haven't seen really before. Like you know, I-, I I think the lineup I really am anxious in seeing is Dame, Pat, Chris, Jay, Giannis. Mm-hmm. I want to see that five out there doing things i think that is a five that gives you shooting all around it also gives you a defensive unit that can really switch on basically everything except with the exception of being dame you know dame's gonna be your your problem point but you have four quality defenders well i say four and of course chris with a bad wheel but so you have you have three and a half quality defenders in a lineup like that and again chris Chris is okay. Chris gives the effort at times, but I really think that's a solid unit that 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 I think Doc's got to break out. I don't think he's he hasn't done it yet. I don't even think he's been able to do it because the guys haven't been available. But that's a lineup I think that that should play and should be able to to play well as long as they're hustling and scrapping out there on the floor. And to be clear, by by Dame Pat, you mean Beverly, not Compton. Oh, of course. Right. Well, well, look. I mean, I, I'm I'm throwing that out there because you know Doc's gonna play Pat Connaughton. You know, Pat Connaughton oh, Pat, gonna play 25, Pat, 25, Pat, 25 well, and, minutes. And that'd be crazy because again, AJ Green should play more minutes over Pat Connaughton too. Yeah, that's well, what like, I was gonna bring that up too. Like the the Beasley, Pat Connaughton, and AJ Green, those three have to be on short leashes at all times. I think AJ Green is probably the best defender out of the three at this point in their careers, uh, but. In terms of who's making shots, who's knocking down shots consistently, they have to be on a short leash. Leash these these three guys. They can either shoot you out of games or they can win you games. But you have to figure out which one of those three is going to be best offensively for you. Uh, so yeah, I think that's where where I'm at with those three. Y'all, I'm doing some quick math right now to try to figure out how how I want to do these minutes. Like at 240 minutes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna break this down. Get give it keep keep going, and I'll have some for you in just a second. No, I, I, I like the lineup that, that you just proposed. The question is, is Giannis going to play in the first game? Because I think that would, that would be a big concern just only having Bobby and Brooke um, for, for game one. I, I don't know if Giannis will be back healthy or if, if they're just going to let him go or what's going to happen there. I think that's the biggest concern going into the series. All right, so let's, let's, let's revisit this question here because we talked about this last time and we, and we talked about how, how would you feel if Giannis had to miss a game. I said last time on this show, right, and, I'm not, and I refuse to be embarrassed about this, but I said last time, listen, if Giannis has to miss a game, I think we, sh- I think we can be all right, right? I think, I think we should be okay if Giannis misses a game. And you know what? I'm going to double down on that statement at this point. Because why? Because sometimes when you're wrong, what do you got to do? You got to double down on it. But I'm going to double down on it. And it's not so much about feeling confident based on what I see with this team. And, yeah, we'll be fine without Giannis. It's about the fact that we should be just fine without Giannis if there's one game against this Pacers team. Now, after what I've seen recently, I would be sweating a whole lot more than we really should be. But I do think that if Giannis has to miss a game, and they say, listen, if he misses a game, he'll be 100%. I'm still in favor of doing that if he needs just one more game to be as close to 100%. That's a misnomer because everybody's heard of this this season, but you get what I'm saying, to be fully cleared and fully healthy. I'm okay with him missing game one. And quite honestly, if we were to somehow steal game one, it would be even better because then maybe, you know, you don't have to come back till game three and he gets time to – to, to, to rest and recover. Now, I know I'm being overly optimistic here, but I'm just saying, like, I don't have a problem with that. If we can get out there, if Giannis doesn't play game one and we can win game one, and then the Bucks like, he needs a little bit more time, they don't play until game three. I, I think that's that's great because, again, the goal is to go on a deep run here, and we want Giannis coming back. I don't want to see Giannis coming back in any sort of limited capacity. I just feel like he's so dynamic that if Giannis has to come back on a minutes restriction and he can only play like 20 minutes, that doesn't help you in a dogfight. 
Yeah, but it also doesn't help you not having him out there at all because, like, like we've always talked about, the Pacers score at such a high level. How much can you really rely on this team to go into the series and be consistent, put up consistent offense that you need to defeat the Pacers? I just don't see it. I don't see it. I can't see it from Dame. Didn't see it tonight. Even if he is aggressive, like everybody was saying, we need Dame to be aggressive. We need Dame to take take the most shots, whatever it is. Oh. He, he almost did that tonight, and he was terrible. So I, I just can't rely on that. And the, the depth is, is going to be a huge problem with the amount of bigs that they have that can really score the basketball. So I think that, that's where I'm at with not having Giannis in the first game. Uh, and then you, ultimately, you just don't want to fall down 0-1 at home. Like That's, that's almost a death sentence there. Um, no matter what, even if it's one-to-one, one -one, you got to go to Indiana and – you know, they're going to be hungry. Their, their home court advantage will be in full effect. And so you don't want to put that type of pressure on the Bucks when it's been on them um, since since last season series with the Heat. That is the same, almost the same situation. So I, I just can't see this team fall 1-1 one and one or 0-2 oh at home. I just – they won't be able to provide the consistency to – to keep it up and then ultimately win a seven game series. I just don't see it. I think you have to go in there and set the tone. That way you have some margin for error on the road. Cause this team is below 500 on the road now. Like let's, let's not get this mixed up. I think it was like 18 and 22 now after tonight's loss. Like that's, that's God awful. That's bad. So I, I think that's where my concern is. Like we've got to be able to take this series to them in the first couple of games at home. We played well at Pfizer of all season. So uh, well, pretty much up until the last four game losing streak. But yeah, I mean, I just don't see, I don't see you sitting on us at all. Go ahead, Trey. He got the minutes. All done. right. I think my, my, my well, math. Trey, like he been doing oh. arithmetic. Wait, hold math, on. You, you, sure you don't want to text this math in the group chat yeah, before you I, put it I, out publicly? I think it's off, but I, but I, it's, it's probably, it's off a set a little bit, but I think, um, but, but I, I'm wasting time trying to get it right. Um, so there are five guys on the court, right? So that means 240, 240 minutes total between between 40, a 48 minute game for five guys, right? Am I right on that? 240 minutes that can be allocated between all players. We agree on that. Okay. Uh, so here's here's what I would do lineup wise: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Whoo! It's a lot of guys playing though. But I'm going. I would give Dame, Damian Lillard's got to play 43 minutes a night. Okay, Dame's got to give me 43. Yas got to give me 40, 41. It's 84. Chris got to give me 35. Okay, so that's three guys right there that give me 43, 41, 35. Okay, I need 20 to 25 minutes out of A.J. Green. Okay, so let's go to the top 25. I know Pat's got to play. I'm talking about Pat Condon, so I give him five minutes in here. Patrick Beverly's got to play 30 minutes a night in a series like this, okay? So we're, we're, we're at 179. Brooke Lopez has got to play minutes as well. So Brooke's going to give me 25. Bobby is going to give me 25. How many more I got left? What else? What I, so what I have about – I got about 11 minutes I got to give left, right? The rest go to Jay Crowder. That's – and well, and, and I would depend, and and really, the J and A and AJ Green minutes can can uh, can they can kind of fluctuate in between each other with Pat Conton as well. That's how that's what I'm looking at somewhere like that. Forty ish or so minutes from Damian Giannis, thirty five or so from Chris, between twenty to twenty to twenty five and fit all AJ J and Pat Conton. All those guys got to equal up fifty minutes or so. Bobby gets 25, Beverly gets 30, Brooke gets 25, and that's how that's how you beat the Indiana Pacers. That's how you do it. You 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 have to because again, those guys have you, you have to play your minutes like this. Eight because again, AJ uh Andre Jackson Jr. is not gonna play. He's not gonna get an opportunity to get in the game. So you're not gonna be able to play him. But but this does not work. And that's where it goes back to uh JT. When you tell me, when you tell me that you got that Giannis can't play first couple nights, that's that's 40. You and I got him saying you can't win unless he plays 40 minutes. Trey. Then Giannis, you're in trouble. Then Giannis you're in trouble. A, Giannis has a calf injury. And Giannis, has a, Giannis has a calf injury at this point. Yeah. But who's to say he can play 40 minutes anyway? Who, who's, no, they, that's what I'm saying. Lose. We need Giannis to play 40 minutes. That's what I'm saying. Like Giannis, Giannis in a very limited, hobbled. Giannis coming out hobbled and limited with not the, the, the typical explosion he has in a calf injury. And then only being able to play 20, 25 minutes. That's not going to help you. 
that's not gonna yes, it will help you to an extent, but that's not gonna help you in the way you so, need. Okay, so tell me right? what yeah. That's like that's like you telling that's like you 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 was in college, right? Has somebody has something coming through. Hey man, we hungry. Can you bring us some food? And she bring a bag of chips for you to share with your roommates. I mean, here, I mean, here's seriously. my question though, JT. If Giannis can't play, then how do you win? How you know do how you win? That's my question. How I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm I'm look, I'm looking, I'm looking at zero, and I'm saying zero, it's your time. <laughs> I looked zero, at him tonight and, and said think, that. I, well, listen, but I'm looking at him again because I'm not giving up on I'm no, not giving up here's on the thing. Here's I'm the looking thing, at me, I'm, I'm going zero. It's yeah. your time. I've seen you elevate a, a team with less around you before. Zero. Bobby, I'm looking in Bobby's eyes. It's your time. I'm looking at Chris. I'm like, Chris, you got the best mid-range jumper in the game. Show it to me tonight. I'm looking at Malik Beasley. I'm like, listen, we all know you can catch fire. Rub them hands together until you get enough friction. Let's see it tonight, right? I'm looking at Jay Crowder, and I'm saying we traded God knows how many picks. Far far (laughs) level, sir. We we got one, two second-round picks between now and 2030. Hey, hey, we gave up the farm for you. I know you went to school around here. I know you can find some magic. I'm looking at his eyes, and I'm doing that. Right, I'm looking at Brooke Lopez. <laughs> I'm looking at Brooke Lopez. Hello, Brooke. What you need, buddy? What you what, what you need? Right? You need to go see the massage therapist. You need the chiropractor. You need acupuncture. What you need? Right? Need Brooke Lopez, the, the the fountain of youth. I'm looking at the talent on this team that we cannot deny that is still very very good without Giannis that has underachieved and underperformed. And I'm asking Doc Rivers, who we got off the golf course, who as far as I'm concerned, has left his coaching notes on the damn golf course, right? I'm asking him, motivate this team. Motivate this talent we've surrounded you with. Don't just be solely reliant on one here, man here, to do thing. so. Here's I, I need thing. folks to earn their paychecks. What the do you thing. mean how do we win without Giannis? Here's the thing. Even with Giannis playing, you're still going to need all of that. That's what I'm saying. It ain't like Giannis. You're you're going to need Damian Lillard to play like Damian Lillard, even if Giannis is giving you averaging forty a night, even if Chris is going out there and, and playing like he's a, a, at a at a very high level, even if Jay Crowder is shooting the ball well and you looking into Pat Beverly's eyes or whatever the hell you're talking about, even if you're doing all of that, you're still going to need that whether Giannis is balling or whether Giannis is out. I just don't. Again, I I I. I, I I just don't know what this team has. Let me tell I, you something I, about. I let, let, me, let me tell you something. What, what, what did Vince Lombardi say? What did he tell you? I, I think this was Vince Lombardi. It might have been John Madden, which those are not the same people. But what did they tell you about good teams and bad teams? What do good teams do? They find ways to win. And what do bad teams do? Find ways to lose. Hey, right. So what do they want to be? This what is a bad, they, yeah, and the Bucks in their last ten have been a bad you, team. But, and, and, and 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 I I am not denying that they've got out there and stunk up the joint. But you know what? What we always say at the beginning of teeth and cues. Any day waking up on this side of the soil is a good, good day, good. right? So my point is, is that there's still an opportunity for this team to figure this thing out and do something different than what we've seen over the last ten games. And I can't be out on these guys because again, the talent and the potential has not gone anywhere. If the execution is flawed, fine. If that's on Doc, then check Doc. If it's not on Doc, then check the players. But at the end of the day, we can get one win against the Pacers without Giannis. There's no reason why we can't. Now, will we? I'm not really sure. But, I mean, I I just – because, yeah, we're not backed into a corner here. If Giannis can't go – Trey, I mean, Chris, you guys agree with me here. If Giannis can only give you 20 minutes, you have a problem. Right, like you, 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 one hundred percent have a problem if Giannis can only give you twenty minutes. There's so no every, point bringing it back if he's gonna play twenty minutes. Th- that, that's my, and that's why I'm saying if he's got to miss game one, then I'm looking at everybody else and I'm like, look, I want to see what you got at this point. I wholeheartedly want to see what you got as a basketball player. Let me put that qualifier in there because I know I, y'all, y'all figured y'all was gonna pause me. Y'all let that go, but I'm really looking at everybody. Right, and, and again, you looking in the folks' eyes, you look at deep into their souls. Like, man, what y'all got? What we doing out here? I just, I just refuse to believe. That, that that all these guys are not good and Giannis is floating this entire team on his own all the time. That's not true. Oh, I got news for you. <laughs> I got news. No, 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 that's I not true. Okay. Yeah, no, I, 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 I I'm, I'm, yeah, I, I think this thing runs solely off of, off of 34's back. And I think that, um, I, I, I my issue, I just think they're old. It's an old, old basketball team. And, Unless Giannis and Dame carry them, they can help you out in pieces here. But Giannis and Dame have to carry them 
um, to that point. And yeah, I, like I said, I see some people saying in the comments saying Chris got to play forty minutes. I get that. Yeah, I'm I'm give or take five minutes either way on on all of these. Like it's not like a game. Yeah, so I'm I'm with you. I don't think every game Chris will give you forty minutes every single night. I don't. Again, I just. I I think he can give you more than 35. I give you that. I think he can give you more than 35 at times. I think a game or two he can put you 40. I don't know that you can run Chris 40 plus minutes every for a how six much time, game series. How much time do we have? We have two days in between games? Um, there are some I think it's gonna be one day. So I mean, we say two, like you have yeah, there's no back to backs. I get nervous. I get nervous with, with I get nervous when you talk about Chris. If it's like a Monday and a Wednesday or something. Yeah, it'll like be like that. that. I, get, every game's like I that. get I get a little nervous about Chris running 40. 40 every game and I mean maybe he can hold up maybe maybe, maybe he yeah we'll see I'm, I'm yeah I'm not I, I'm not if and yeah I'm not I'm not down I'm just giving like some room for hey let's give you a couple minutes here that we know if we can spare him uh, I'd love it if he if, if yeah if, if Chris could play 40 I would say give him yeah give me 40 every night I just don't know these buys me to hold up and do that but we'll again we'll, we'll see kind of how it goes and again I mean Brooke Lopez the, the thing is it's how you play him because I some people saying Brooke Lopez 25 minutes it's how you play Brooke Yes, if you're going to play him where he stands around the perimeter all night offensively and jacks up threes, yeah, it's not it's not it's it's not going to to work even offensively for him. Defensively, it's going to be a different story. I, I do think he the, here's the thing for Brook to be on the floor. And I know it's going to rubs people the wrong way. He's got to play kind of more like that AG style in the first five games where you're not dropping every five seconds. You have to tag up and play a little bit higher on people. I wouldn't be surprised if the Bucks run some zone. I wouldn't be surprised if the Bucks run a, a ton of zone in series two um, to try to to try to play uh, Indiana like that. But again, I think it's gonna be. I, I do think it's gonna be an entertaining, a uh, good, fun series. I think the, the emotions will run high during that series. Um, give me your thoughts, fellas, on what you think happens a seven game series against the Indiana Pacers. I mean, in, you know, I don't think we have to go through the scenarios of what happens when the Bucks lose because there'll be plenty of time for that if it happens, but um, how does this thing play out? Is it six games, seven games, Bucks win, Bucks lose? And I and here's the thing, I don't want the fan team Bucks. I want what happens. What I want, no, this is the answer I want. I don't want what you're rooting for, what you're cheering for. I want, this is your, this is the rest of your money. Everything that you have is mm. going on this. You mm. have to pick who wins the series and in how many games? That's that's what this is. This is down to your last dollar. That's how you're betting this series. That's how you're betting on on this. All right. Well, look, I'm gonna bet every every penny that Chris got to his name, and I'm gonna go with the Milwaukee basketball Bucks end up winning this series. The Milwaukee Bucks are going to win this series against the Pacers. Now, I have absolutely no idea. What's going to happen after this this series in the second round? I, 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 I'm, not really, I, I'm not going to have any money left to bet, right, because I'm betting everything Chris got. But I think the Milwaukee Bucks win this season, I, win this series. I, I, I really do. And you know what? Remember Benedict uh, – Martha where, – where did that boy go to school? Matherin. Where, where, where did he go to college? Arizona. Where did T.J. McConnell go to college? Arizona. Oh, man, I forgot about that. I love, I love those boys, man. Bear down. Back to cats, but no. At the end of the day, you don't have you don't have Benedict. He not out there, and he was doing he was doing his thing against the Bucks too. As a, you know, so I think I think the Bucks still have a very favorable matchup. I think the Bucks have the advantage against this Pacers team. I think to an extent, there's a lot of there's a lot of bark. There's not as much bite as the bark there. They can't play a lick of defense, and I think that helps this Bucks team if we get rolling. So I ain't worried about. It. Listen. Y'all know how I feel about defense. I'm 100% happy winning every single one of these games, 128 and 124. I have absolutely no issue with that. that okay, so, so you so said how many Bucks games, in, though? In, yeah, how many games? What were in, about? In, oh, <laughs> man. I think it goes seven. Oh, I, think seven. It, I, think, I think it goes seven. My goes God. <laughs> so you if said all that to in, say seven games. Indiana, you said all Indiana. that. Indiana. Well, I'm betting your money, Chris. If, you know, <laughs> I, 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 mean, look, I, I mean, I'd love it if it was six, but. I think, it, Indiana, I think it goes. I think it goes seven. If Indiana takes, if Indiana is taking, um, if yeah, Indiana is taking seven, Milwaukee cook, to seven boy. games, man, we, yeah, second round is not gonna be pretty. Listen, man. Uh, okay, so uh, JT has Bucks in seven. If, if we Chris, play at our, if we play at our best offensively, and they play at their best offensively, unless they get Caitlin Clark out there as another weapon for them, 
I don't think they can beat us if we both play at our best offensively. Okay. I don't. And our defense is better than theirs. There's no question about that. I'd I think agree we with have that. better personnel, better, better, better defensive personnel. And if it has to be an absolute track meet and the game's going to come down a, a, a team getting a couple stops, I'm putting my money on the Milwaukee basketball Bucks. I just don't Here know if the Bucks are. I remember I, I would probably have said that earlier in the season, track meet, but I don't know if the Bucks can handle track meet anymore. I, I haven't seen their offense show me they can handle a track meet where the scores are in the 130s one day. That's not going to happen. Bucks got to drag this thing out. Okay, Chris, you got so you got Bucks in seven. What you got, Chris? See, see, like I, I don't know. Uh, to be honest, like first off, we haven't seen Pascal Siakam yet. Uh, I don't think we played him yet. I don't know. But with that being said, and you know Ben Matherin being out, I, I still see the Bucks winning this. But it's either going to be seven or five. It, it's it's not gonna be it's not gonna be six. We're not gonna beat them at home or at their place um, to to close out the series. I know this team won't. So I'm all right. So I'm gonna go Bucks in five. But here's here's where my point of view stands. They bring Giannis back for game one. We go quick. We go quick two zero because Giannis is dominant and he does to Miles Turner uh, illegal things. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say Bucks in five. Uh, I think Pacers get one at home, and then we close it out in five. Um, yeah, so that's – that's uh, man, it's it's tough to do it because there's a lot of unknowns going into the series. Uh, they're not – their guys aren't playing as good or they have a couple of guys that are playing better than they were when we cause, – because, like, we got over with that season series very early in the season um, with the Pacers. So, like I said, there's a lot of unknowns, but I'm going to just uh, – I'm going to say Bucks and five. Okay, you got Bucks and five. We got a Bucks and seven, Bucks and five. So I'll switch it up. I'm going to go Bucks in six. Um, I think that it's one of those things where I think game one is, I mean, obviously it's playoff game, so everything's a must win. But if there's a must win of all must wins, the Bucks have got to win the first game of the series. And that's why I think Giannis has to play, because if you get down 0-1 to that basketball team, it might be great. I'm not saying it's over, <laughs> it but. It might be. It could definitely be curtains if you because again, they're already coming in with this confidence that a six seed they they are like where's one thousand percent the Indiana in the Indiana uh Pacers think they can beat us. They one hundred percent think they can come in and they have no doubts that they can beat the Milwaukee Bucks in the series. They have no no doubts internally. You gotta show them. You gotta show them. And I mean, I I, I think you gotta show them in a, in a in a big way. And um, yes, yeah, so I'm I will take the Bucks in six. Again, I, I just have a hard time. Not taking the talent that the Bucks have, uh, and again, so you're beating you know, them at uh, at Gamebridge Fieldhouse to close it out in six. You're beating them away. Well, yeah, well, yeah, because if if you again, because I'm I'm assuming that the way it'll go, I'm I'm assuming that the Bucks, if they can get a couple wins under their belt, because again, right now you're just playing bad basketball. But if you can start to get to, oh, let's say you start off because to get the six win, let's say you start off two zero and series up two zero. And then they go back 2 2, and then you had to, you know, you, you want everyone at home. When you were, even if you could do it like that, that means the Bucs will, have, will have, have been winning some games as quality opponents. So I think kind of all bets go off once you start playing quality basketball. And that's what I'm waiting to see. And the Bucs just haven't shown that um, by any stretch of imagination. So I'm hoping to see that. Um, and it, but again, game one's going to show me all I need to know. I, I think game one's going to show me everything. Like, is Damian Lillard going to play like Damian Lillard? Is Giannis gonna is yeah will Giannis be there? Um, are we gonna have the type of effort that I think the Bucks need to have? Because you can't wait in a series like this. The Milwaukee Bucks cannot wait. You know how a lot of things that like if you lose on your home floor, that game two is like a must win. Everybody's racing around here on fire and all oh, you gotta win again. I mean, efforts all they scream, Bobby, Bobby, I'm going crazy. You need to have that game one. Like you're not good enough to withstand losing your first game. Be like, all right, let's lock in now, fellas. Like, I don't. You haven't shown me that you're good enough to play the we'll lock in when we feel like it. All right, it's game two. Now the series has started. They done beat us. No, no, no. You need to have that game one and showing. And again, I think all these games, I think these games are gonna be close. I think these games are gonna be close. I don't think it's gonna be a bunch of blowouts. They're gonna be close games. I think close games um are advantage for the Milwaukee Bucks. Mm -hmm. But again, we say it and we said it before, it will be embarrassing if you lose this series. Okay. It will be more embarrassing than what happened last. Last year was a was a one eight. And you're like, this a loss in a series to the, uh, this time against the Pacers 
would be more embarrassing than what happened last year. So I hope for their sake they win it. I hope for our sake they we win it. Uh, again, we had some fun doing these post game shows, um, and you know that's that's what we want to see. Yeah, and I think you definitely do have the experience in those close games, right? Because you have a guy like Chris Middleton who's been there, done that. Giannis who's been there, done that. But the question will be, can those three gel in crunch time? Because we've seen some questionable uh, decision making over the over the course of the season. Really, when those three are out there, they were good in, in clutch time under AG, but under Doc, they haven't been. So I think that'll be the biggest one of the biggest uh, question marks going in is just how will they perform when. When butts get tight, right, JT? <laughs> so, yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I'm not gonna um, it. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we will see how all of that goes. Um, let's go to the uh, – let's go to Twitter real quick. A couple, uh, couple thoughts from Twitter um, before we uh, get to kind of wrapping this thing up here. Uh, if I can get to it. Um, all right. Um, let's see here. Uh, at Bald Eagle says Doc also a no show. Uh, he says Doc was no show. At Drew Barringer says hard to have any faith in Lillard this postseason. At Sam McAdams four says sadly the Dame trade will go down as the reason Giannis leaves the Bucks, showing up for a fourth of the games and shoot, showing up one fourth of the games and shooting tour dates the other three games uh, is pathetic. Oh, he's saying like he only played well one out of four, one out of four games. Um. At Porco Nogui says, we're playing the only team I'm really scared of with an injured Giannis in the first round. Going to need rest, focus, and a solid plan to slow these young Pacers down. At J.R. Horvath says, trade Dame and Chris and Pat and Brooke. So sick of their no-show hype. Dame is finished. Uh, at GA underscore hoop says, Dame Lillard has fooled me this season. Um, at K Kayla Ann says, Mr. 2 for 14. Um, at Ricky Tan says, when did the Bucks become the team that thought they were too good to try? No more Bucks in six now, just Team Cabo. What a flaming bag of dog shit. Shit game, <laughs> <laughs> shit game all around. Be embarrassed that they were paid to play this shitty. Hey, <laughs> hey, shout out to Ricky Ricky Tan uh, from Rush Hour. How about that? Uh, Y'all yeah. remember that Rush Hour two? Does anybody know who Ricky Tan? Is? Oh my That's god! Bad, right? Oh, that was uh, Chris Tucker yelling that out. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and then we'll do one more. At Sunk345 says, if there was an award for stupidest basketball team, the Bucks and Celtics would win it every year. Two of the stupidest basketball teams I've watched as an NBA fan. So, uh, again, not nice stuff coming from the uh, Twitter. Uh, Nikonzo Mazabuko in the chat says, Dane got exposed. Um, so, again, a lot of, lot of interesting stuff here um, all over all over the place. I think again. I think at the end of the day, people are just disappointed. Like the Bucks are, are have have backed their way into the playoffs. Um, this team, and just being honest, looked much better to start the season um, in under the tutelage of, of Doctor Griffin. And now we're gonna see what happens as they uh, try to get try to have these playoff hopes again. Forty nine and thirty three ends the regular season for the Bucks. I mean, what a shame! This basketball team started off thirty and thirteen, and they don't finish with fifty wins. I mean that that is uh, that that is uh, that that's embarrassing. Um, so again, the Bucks. Uh, this is, and I, I'll say this before we before we kind of kind of wrap this. You know, as we wrap a one thirteen eighty eight um, loss to the Magic before we do game balls. I, you know, it's one of those things where I feel like people appreciate their first title. Obviously, you know, yeah, I'm sure that that first title Giannis won. That you know, the Bucks in twenty twenty one will be something that you can't take away guys will be you know just so happy about they won a championship this is one of those ones where if the bucks were able to win a championship this year you could almost argue it would be sweeter than the first one because of all the trials and tribulations mm. and how much adversity um they have faced all year uh this is definitely a tougher road uh, i think than what happened in 2021 but just like 2021 the Bucks are gonna be the three seed, so uh, maybe there's maybe that's the magic uh, being the three seed to uh, to advance and, and and win this thing. But we'll see. Um, game balls. We can skip game that. We skip can, game we, we can skip that for it. Right, what what is the point? Well, well, yeah. I, so I'll give mine. I'll give mine to Jonathan Isaac because I yeah, we skip it because uh, the Bucks was give trash. It, give, it to, give it to Maga John. Go ahead, man. Yeah, I'm gonna give it to Jonathan Isaac because he he impacted the game. Like you know, I'm not you know I I get but it. Is that game ball worthy? 
Oh yeah, oh yeah. He he was he it, was it, the he was the best defensive player on the floor tonight. He he Damian Lillard couldn't get past him. Um, Bobby couldn't score on him, and Bobby had a good night. But when John Isaac got on him, that Jonathan Isaac impact was was a as a seven. How tall is Jonathan Isaac? He's seven feet. Close, no close to six it, eleven, six, whatever. Nine, six, Jonathan nine. Isaac was out was out the perimeter. He was defending, uh, protecting the rim, protecting the basket. Like I think he again, the Bucks only scored eighty eight points. <laughs> I think he was he was a big part of everything uh, in helping the. Uh, in helping the Orlando Magic, man. So again, I, I'm I'm gonna give Jonathan Isaac uh, for protect, protecting the perimeter, protecting the paint, uh, and and helping secure a win for the Orlando Magic. It was a much different outlook than what we saw the other night uh, against Orlando. A uh, cute money adventure is hilarious. <laughs> he said he said no game balls, only blue balls. Yeah, yeah. Right now, <laughs> right now. That's what that's what we're getting from this Bucks team. Uh, yeah. Look, I'm gonna give it to Wendell Carter. I thought. Just the way he was able to distance uh, the Orlando Magic from the Bucks when he came in in the second half, I think he had like a good putback dunk and then knocked down a couple threes, played good defense. I think he was as big as anybody in this game because that ultimately, you know, blew the Bucks out after he he started to get going. So yeah, I'll give it to him. Y'all in some little league right now? Everybody get a everybody get a certificate. Everybody get a trophy. You ain't giving nobody no damn game ball. Well, no, I damn one of them. Nobody no, credit where it's due, even though they suck. Each one, each one, yeah, just because the Bucks didn't get a game ball doesn't mean Atlanta, Atlanta won the game. I, I don't know why they don't get them. They won the game. Uh, one more. Andy Waba says, AG was 1-4 versus the Pacers. This is the best thing that could have happened to the Bucks. Plus, to improve upon last year, they would need to win two playoffs game. I don't know what that means. Oh, two playoff games. Uh, so he, so Andy's saying, not well, at look, like at that, what, look at what <laughs> Agent Griffin did against the Pacers. And this is why Doc Rivers here is going. Now, I, I, let, me ask, let me before we let's ask this. So, if Doc Rivers is able to beat the Pacers and win a series, that would be one of your because we've had the comparators between, um, we've had the comparators right between the records that Adrian Griffin had and Doc Rivers had and this and that and what team like offensively, defensively between the two. This would be a head-to-head comparison. Where Adrian Griffin did have five games against the Pacers and lost them, this will be a direct competition, Doc Rivers Pacers, and I, I don't I don't think Andy's like all the way right, like as far as like this, but but that would be a very good comparator as far as like what the Bucks are now versus what they were, style contrasting those things, and hey. Doc Rivers may be, you know, he may not, he may have been 16 and 18 for the season, but against the Pacers, he's going to end up, you know, like I said, maybe the Bucks win 4 2 and he'll be 4 2 against the Pacers. I'm going to take, there, no. I'm going to take up for you on this one, Trey, because they're two completely different teams. You're playing a different Pacers team who made the trade to go and get Pascal Siakam, no Benedict Matherin. Uh, so if you win this series, there it's not a comparison on AG and, and Doc Rivers, especially because those games were regular season games outside of the, the play-in tournament. So it's really not as high as stakes as a regular season game. And so, yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even make that – I would stop him right there and not make that comparison. And then the second part of his point, a two, two games would be an improvement. That's not the expectation. The expectation is not to win two games in the first round and improve on last season. Not with this team, not with, not with the trades they made, not with the firings they had. Uh, yeah, I can't get with that point at all in, in totality. Okay. Um <laughs> Was this an underwhelming point or okay. no? No, I, I, I know JT has something to say, but okay. Uh, no, I'm, 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 I, I, I know, I, I get all of that. I get all of that. I, I, I just don't know. I, I think it's, you know, it's interesting. I think there's some. I agree, it's two different teams, but you know, there's some, you know, there's there's some give and take there, some back and forth. So I, I don't know. I'll be interested to see what happens. I will say again, if the if the Bucks lose, you know, we'll make that point. Like, look. Oh yeah. Did I mean, you upgrade at all? Like, what was the point? Again, there's there's gonna be a lot of stuff that goes into it as this playoff series rolls on. We'll see what happens with the Bucks. Um, I don't know. Do you want? I mean, I, I feel like we've talked for a long time today. Uh, so I, I'd be okay. We ready? To just uh, y'all want to talk about anything else? NBA? Y'all ready to wrap this thing? We could wrap it because uh, the West stuff is going on right now. We won't be finished yeah. after that's done. So I mean, we we could maybe check in before the playoffs if we want to do like a, a little, you know, 
playoff picture video or something. But other than that, no, I think I think we're good. I think we can do our final regular season send off. All right, let's uh, well let's wrap this thing up. Uh, <laughs> as the Bucks uh, lose it tonight this afternoon, uh, man, just uh, just didn't get the job done. One thirteen eighty eight, but it's a consolation prize. They will get the Indiana Pacers in the first round of the NBA playoffs. Who knows? Who knows how it's going to go? We do know. Uh, we appreciate everybody for joining us as you have all season long. The regular season has concluded, folks. Uh, man, it was a long year. Some ups, some downs, all the things uh, that went through it. We argued, we fought, we talked. We were together in the Buck season, uh, and we will be together, you know, whether it lasts another. It is the. You only got four guaranteed. You got four more games guaranteed in this season. Um, so, I mean, obviously they go longer than that. But the Bucks are going to have, you know, they have work to do. And this is when the real season starts. This is going to, you know, these will be emotional post games, hype at the Cream City crossover, all the above. Because, again, you, and you got to think, just like the, the, the playoffs, every possession matters. Every single possession matters. You're trying to, I mean, again, not that it doesn't make sense, but, but it, it's a different level. NBA playoffs is so fun um, to watch and behold. And so I think the Bucks, more than any team, got to lock in and, 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 and see how this thing plays out. And I, I don't know. I, I don't know how it will. I, this is, I would say this is definitely the least. This is the least optimistic I've been about a Bucks team since probably 2018. Um, take that for whatever's worth. But, um, I don't know. We'll see what happens against the Pacers. We'll see what happens uh, as the postseason continues to roll on. I want to thank our sponsors, as always, the law office of Daily M. Johnson, giving us defense where? Off the court. Off the court. Uh, call my guy, Daily M. Johnson, 608-893-8370. 70. Get your legal advice there, your criminal defense advice, all of that. Uh, we Yeah, so, again, this has been a – Cream City, me. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. First of all, um, tell a friend to tell a friend to tell another friend about the Cream City crossover. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, these playoff shows are going to be epic. Like it, um, subscribe it, like yeah. it, subscribe yeah. it. If you like it again, if you want to create another email address, like it, subscribe it, do whatever mm -hmm. it is you got to do, man. But definitely. That way, um, that way we can uh, get JT a ring light. You looking like un unlocked characters? <laughs> oh, I, I, what I need a ring light? A little OnlyFans? A uh, little uh, OnlyFans ring light? Y'all got ring lights? Yeah, I don't have no ring light. Wanna, if, yeah, I know Trey don't have no ring light. Chris, you got a ring light? You got nah, a ring. I got professional lighting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet light. you got the lights coming got up the from the floor. Thing, the yeah, 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 right. Yeah. Uh, any uh, any final words before Here's we uh, as we wrap up the regular season, fellas? You know what? Right now, it's over. It's over. It was an up and down regular season. We went through one of the more dramatic regular seasons than anybody can remember in recent history. Firing up with the firing our AG and the transition to Doc. Um, I'm not out on this team, and nobody has any reason at all to be out on this team. We've seen a whole lot of up and down. Uh, th th we've seen adversity in this season. There's been some highs. There's been. There's definitely been some lows. Right now, it looks like we're in a, we're, we're we're in a valley right now. But again. Our fortunes can turn around in a heartbeat. And come Monday, when the regular season is officially over, everybody's 0-0. Zero, zero. It's a new start. It's a brand new start. We get a chance to write our narrative. We get a chance to go ahead and flip the script here. And, man, I'm looking forward to these Bucks getting out there and doing their thing against the Pacers. So if you can bet Chris's money, bet on these Bucks. Bet on yeah, these Bucks to beat team. these Pacers in a, in a, in a, in a, in a seven-game series. Yeah, I just once again I appreciate everybody tuning in. This has been super fun. It's been chaotic as hell. I'll admit that there's been a ton of ups and downs, like we said, but that's what makes the NBA so special. That's what made the regular season so fun to to bring you guys post games. And for all the NBA fans that you know sitting at home because their team is trash and got knocked out already of playoff contention, and they want to hop on the Cream City bandwagon, they want to hop on the Milwaukee Bucks bandwagon because they like Giannis, they like Dame. Well. Point him in the right direction, baby. We, hey, I'm I'm super excited. I think I think we might get endless amount of post game shows this uh, this playoffs, and I think uh, the Bucks can really help us out with that. And they just got to take care of business, one series at a time, one game at a time, one possession at a time. And you've got the talent to do it. Why not us, right? 
Why not us? Yeah, that's what that's exactly what we want to see. We want to see the Bucks uh get this thing done. Um again, we appreciate everybody for sticking with us, watching, listening, however you do it, YouTube, Twitter, all of that. It all helps. Um, this has been a Cream City Media Group production. It's the Guru Trey Crosby the third. JT. Chris King. Uh Bucks in 60 on Monday. And then uh the playoffs are gonna start in about a week or so. So uh, we probably Shoot some content for you, something like that. I'm gonna shoot some content. Yeah, nah, y'all get some light. content. I ain't shooting no content. With y'all. I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, all right, man. We get out of here, man. Uh, hey, listen, man. If we are your enemy, if we are your enemy, it is only because we dare to tell you the truth. Don't take no wood nickels. <laughs>